We can go and do it. We can go and do it. Peace, peace to the family. Peace, y'all. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. What's good with you? Peace, love, and light. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <clears throat> what's good? What's great? What's cracking? What's bracking? Shout out to Brother Red. Red, you might want to tap in for this, you know. At least I have a theory that you might want to, after I get to cooking. After I get to cooking. Peace, y'all. Welcome back. <laughs> Man, I was seeing what that joke. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, let me uh ooh let me get myself situated. Oof Yeah Um at the Atlanta Blockchain Center DM me we could definitely make that happen. Alright, shout out to the Atlanta Blockchain Center. From a business standpoint, is Universal Records right for downgrading Drake's worth by promoting Kendrick with Spotify? Um, I'm, I'm, let me, let me analyze that question and answer it as best as I can. My good brother, uh, chaos, right? From a business standpoint, is universal records right for downgrading Drake worth by promoting Kendrick with Spotify? All right, let's let's take a look at that. Um, Universal Music Group is a business conglomerate, right, which is inclusive of Universal Records, of which I believe Drake is signed as an artist to, right? They paid him four hundred million dollars. They, you know, it amounts to what I'm ex what was being told to me, you know, like how we understand the three sixty deal is. Right, they get a portion of the merch, they get a portion of you know record sales, you know what I'm saying, and things of that nature. Uh, Kendrick Lamar is signed to Universal for distribution, from what I understand. Right now, you could correct me if I'm wrong. Um, this is this is what I believe that I know about their situation, so. Either, you know, either which way we're understanding that a music label is in bed with both of these artists or both of these artists are in bed with one music label, right? So we revisit, um, you know, these, these situations, these rap battles that have taken place in the past, right? I believe that um, Nas might have been on Epic at the time or Columbia for that matter when he was battling with Jay-Z and the Blueprint in 2001, I believe that Rockefeller was still with with Def Jam and they might have been getting distributed by a larger label like Universal. I'll have to research to see where exactly because Def Jam has been in the hands of a lot of different, you know, um, distri distributors. Nonetheless, um, it's, 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 this, is, this is the aspect that we call the music business. You know what I'm saying? And the music business is different than what we consider to be hip hop or, you know, the music that we enjoy as fans. You know what I'm saying? Or what we quote unquote call the culture. The culture is one thing. The music business is something totally different. Right. So I don't know how they can diminish the worth of a rapper by promoting another rapper. His worth, if it was diminished, it was diminished in the public sphere, right, of where, how a person is viewed, you know what I'm saying, because the culture is driven by fandom, the, the, the L's that he has received has come by way of him receiving an L in a highly publicized battle, so any level of diminishing of his worth or his value is in the culture, right, this doesn't necessarily um, diminish his uh, ability to restructure his contract or renegotiate, 
you know, because it was explained as well that he's supposed to be going up for renegotiations with this, with the, um, with the conglomerate that he signed to. You know what I'm saying? So they have a financial imperative to, I would imagine, right, aid and assist their artists, especially if their artist has a hot streak because they're only in the business of selling albums. They're not in the personality business. So the record label is not going to take sides and then definitely not going to take sides with someone who's not perceived to be, quote unquote, winning the battle. Right. That wouldn't be a smart business decision, um, because ultimately what we can say about what we do know about about rap battles is it's not going to be swayed by the corporations. You feel me? That is about. That's an element of hip hop that still kind of belongs to the people. And I remember. And this guy has a lot of nerve because I remember when he battled um, Meek Mill. I remember corporations were getting in on it. I remember the, the, you know, like Good Day New York. And, you know, there was there was other corporations that was utilizing their public Twitter to make tweets about the battle. And they were putting their support behind this individual. These were corporate brands, right? Now, I don't know if it, it, it came down to the person that was running the account was a Drake fan. You feel me? But these were corporate accounts that were tweeting their support for back to back. And I felt that that was underhanded. I'm like, damn, like this is a hip hop battle. And you got entire corporations utilizing the weight of, of, of you know, of their corporate influence to kind of like kick the, the artist that is down. That kind of seemed kind of weird to me at the time. You feel me? Like General Motors and, you know, it was it was just wow. Big corporate labels. Everyone was getting in on the feeding fest. Right now, I don't think that that was something that was paid for necessarily, but it could have been. It could have been a market and a PR scheme. You feel me? So. <clears throat> I know, you know, what, what what the lawsuit is saying and what's being alleged and everything. Now, we could take a take a step back and 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 look at it for what it's worth, right? Because at the end of the day, even if it's part of the quote unquote music business, it's still gonna it's it's impacting the culture. It's gonna reflect on the culture, and this is when people bring out the marker to create a demarcation line. And the sentiments that I'm hearing online is people saying this is not hip hop, right? Almost like if you bring a lawsuit against another person, that's like running and getting them folks, right? You call in the 12, you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's soft shoe snitching, right? When you, you was engaged in a fade, right? Regardless if if it started as a friendly fade and went to something else, or if it never was a friendly fade, it theoretically started as something and it went into something else. It metamorphosized, right, into something else. Um, and the understanding is that according to the culture, you're supposed to keep it in a particular place. Now, according to the music business, right, they play by different standards. So the markers have come out and people have established that there's some sort of a demarcation line that exists between what's considered the culture and what's considered the quote unquote music business. Now, this is a very interesting observation. You feel me? So I believe that there's a small hat by coming out. Um, my, my, my observation of this entire battle Right, that it was one that it was built on a ethical or a, a ethnic observation. When someone says they're not like us, I think that he was speaking more, you know, not just to the point that homie's a Canadian and 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 Drake might be. I mean, and uh, Kendrick might be from Compton. I think that he was speaking directly to the ethnicity factor to begin with, the small hat factor, which was deemed to come out at some point because that's his default. He has to fall back on who he is, 
regardless of who you want him to be or how he's being painted in the public, right? Or packaged and promoted to the populace like he's quote unquote one of us. And the understanding is that if this is a quote unquote a urban based music that comes from a particular demographic, then this is, you know, this thing of ours, right? And he was painted as an outsider that has been given a ghetto pass or a pass of some sort to come amongst you folks and <laughs> blow the flute like Peter Piper and walk away with all your women's. You know what I'm saying? Somebody caught him, right? Right before he got through the door and they called him out and he fell to pieces. And we seen that the boy was really just the boy. You know what I'm saying? And he had not yet had the things that was necessary, you know, the 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 fortitude to fight the fight that was necessary that anybody that's been in the street fight knows how to fight. Right? And this is this is the warning that was given to the quote unquote culture from the door that, you know, when you open up and invite a lot of the posers in, you feel me, these are elements that ultimately they're gonna bring and it's gonna undermine the culture. So the comment earlier where somebody asks, you know, why would Universal allow Drake's worth to be diminished by them propping up Spotify plays with bots? Um, again, it's a business. You know what I'm saying? If in case that was the point, that's not the first time that that's been done. Like, just yesterday, I was looking for a music um, piece to put on one of my reels, right? I was putting up a music to put on one of my reels and I I might I the search criteria that I might use is a word. So yesterday the theme that I was utilizing in my reel was sunshine, right? It was sunshine cuz I was speaking about something pertaining to the sun, right? So I'm looking through the reel through the audio selection of the reel and I put in sun, right? as the criteria to see what pops up and they they show me like 20 different drake selections none of them had the word sun in the title so i was sitting there just earlier yesterday saying what type of bot promotion does this individual have where he got 20 different song selections in my search criteria now they only pulled up about 40 something songs you know what i'm saying and 20 of them was Drake. And I was just like, that's weird. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what, what sort of box is involved in the search criteria where he's always an option? And I'm not hating. I was just making an observation. You feel me? So later on in the day, when I hear um, about the lawsuit and the accusations that are being made, I just found that that was very interesting. But I think it's a u unique opportunity Um if it does go right the full length for us to see the dynamics of how the industry plays the games that the industry plays you know what i'm saying and this is this is going to be interesting you know for those who have been attempting to prove that there has been payola involved in the industry right for quite some time um but this this sounds kind of borderline delusional. Um, it seems like we are divided on a lot and united on a little. What will it take to reverse that perception? I, I don't think it's going to get any better going forward. There's going to be more division than there is unity, right? What, do, what, 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 what can we possibly unify around going forward? Um, we are already divided, you know what I'm saying? And, and the splintering of those divisions are increasing, right? And they made it very clear, right? People made it very clear that they have very distinctive differences and they're willing to stand on whatever line that they have drawn. So where's the unity gonna come from? When have you seen our people unified? And around what? That's what I would like to know. I'm 49, right? Um, I have not seen unity in my lifetime, at least the type that we keep speaking about, this very aloof idea of unity. What are we going to unify around? And I'm just asking the question. 
what are we supposed to be unifying around? And this this is this is a question that I ask to the quote unquote leaders, the thought leaders and everybody else all the time. I'd be like, where's the vision? Right. There's is it, you're supposed to unify around a vision. If there's no vision, what are people going to unify around? Right. It sounds good. It's, it's one of those talking points that we continuously, you know, we parrot and we parrot it a lot. But what are we going to unify around? Uh, obviously, we weren't unified around civil rights. There was clear demarcations during that time. You know what I'm saying? There was people that were felt that they was uber revolutionary. You know what I'm saying? And 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 they said that those people were sellouts, and they was bootlickers and boot kisses. So when when was we unified around civil rights? The elements of hip hop? No, we weren't. We were never unified around that either, right? The elements of hip hop was mainly like a East Coast thing. Some parts of it matriculated to the West Coast, but the minute the West Coast got hold of the game, they, they wasn't they wasn't unified around the elements of hip hop, right? Which brings me to a wonderful observation, and it's what I call confrontational consciousness, right? And confrontational consciousness seems to be a new form of conscious music that Kendrick is standing on. Cause I'm saying, would y'all agree? Is he a conscious artist or is he not? Conscious community ain't that interested in practical solutions to our problems. I don't think that that's true either. We need to get the 12 tribes to the table. What 12 tribes are we talking about? What, what are you talking about? What 12 tribes are you talking about? Right? So... We're looking at the return of, quote unquote, consciousness as an art form, right, back to the game to a place where it's considered, you know, it's sitting on the top or it's sitting in a position that is, you know, a coveted one. Because people is like, oh, Kendrick, he's the one. You feel me? But this is a different level of consciousness. This is not your peace, love and light. Right. This is confrontational consciousness. This is saying that if this is necessary and needed at this particular point, right, this thing right here, right, the Black Christos mythos, if you're going to clean the swamp, right, and because niggas got their own swamp, right, <laughs> it's a Negroido swamp. This shit is black as tar. It's real thick, right? It's thick like quicksand. The people that were promised the land of milk and honey who are lost in the land of the Egyptians. Okay. All right. Yeah, good luck with that. Like I said, people are not even unified around that concept. You know what I'm saying? So where 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 are those twelve people, those tribes gonna come from? And how are they going to position themselves to speak to the rest of the populace that don't prescribe to that? You feel me? So I you know and, and this where um, organization, organizing and everything, it, it, you know, it becomes something that if you can pull it off, then you definitely need to do that because I don't see that happening. And that's no disrespect, you know what I'm saying, to that um, we must learn about the breastplate of judgment. That's what's up. I talk about it in my ministries, right? talk about the 12 jewels that make up the breastplates and the, the fact that they had the breastplates and the jewels arranged in a particular way so the priest couldn't lie yeah they got rid of that thing so they could tell lies can't you tell the crystals were given us to remember then you should you should you know sign up to defend crystals from christians who love tearing down crystals and saying that they're evil Come to Atlanta. I can send you to um, Jamal Bryant's congregation and a bunch of other places where if you get your spiel together, I can get you to the front row. And you can start taking your shots. Yeah. But until then, yeah, I, I don't I don't foresee that happening. And no disrespect. So. Once we see the conscious community prioritizing hitting the pavement, we'll know we're going somewhere. I mean, you know people from that community are outside you know it started on the pavement so for for them to say hitting the pavement where else is it is 
I mean, the majority of it may exist online right now, but that's not how it started. You feel me? It's still outside. It's on the pavement. They pound on the pavement. What do you want them to do on the pavement? When you see them on the pavement, what, what should it look like? Tell me, how should they show up in your community for you to know that it's effective enough for you to get outside with them, if that's the case? Hmm? So, yeah, confrontational consciousness, right? Because... The, the 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 ethos around religion or religiosity is up for grabs and Kendrick on his last album came out and said I'm not your savior right and then he commenced to get a Tiffany created cross with uh <laughs> with eight thousand diamonds in it. You feel me? And every time that you saw him promoting Mr. Morale you feel me? He was in his bag with his with his motifs, his Christos motifs. Right. And I haven't heard him speaking any Hebrew Israelite rhetoric for two albums. Right. He's in he's on he's in his Christos bag. Right. And regardless of whether shout out to my brother, Kibalon, regardless of whether he identifies with himself being a self savior or not, he has personified the iconography and the motifs of it. And some things go harder without you copying or saying them by just doing them. So if you are in an industry that says that they are on demon time and they're run by demons, right? And there's layers and levels to this, right? Because, you know, <laughs> it could be argued to say, well, you're signed to a label where some of the head demons are at, you know what I'm saying? The bezel bub and all of them. You feel me? So it's, it's, layer, it's layers and it's levels to this. But we at least see somebody that is openly wrestling with morality and their own personal morality, as well as the overarching morality of not just the game. Right. But also of the street culture that they come from, the things that are taking place right in their society, right in their hoods, right in their cities. Right. Being a good kid from a bad city. I could relate to that. You know what I'm saying? I, I never... um <clears throat> Wait. <laughs> Whew, caught myself. I was very selective about the things that I was willing to do in the underworld of New York City. You know what I'm saying? I never sold a piece of crack a day in my life. There's places where I drew the line. Where I knew identifiably the devil was right there and I was not going to contract with him. You know what I'm saying? That was a conscientious decision that was made. So you can be a good kid from a bad city. You know what I'm saying? And you can still tread the line. And I think that in, you know, in, in his regards, let's say somebody like Nas, right, who sat in the project window and became a street reporter for things that he may have observed. He put himself a little too far in the story at one point, but he was an observer. He was a street observer. He was a street journalist. You know what I'm saying? Kendrick as well, making these observations and able to put it in poetic prose and present it to the world in a way in which is so compelling, you get a Pulitzer for it, right? You bring beauty to the ugliest elements of life. That's pure poetry. So rather than saying, look, I am of messianic energy, I am of messianic force, I am of the Christos, right? Rather than him saying that, he has personified being that person that goes into the industry, right, and has to create upheaval, right, confrontational consciousness. And it's cool because people are going to be like, oh, you just looking at this too deep pill. You know what I'm saying? I just can't stay on the surface with it. And I'm like, if, if there's one artist in the game that is not surface driven, it's this artist. And it, I, I didn't make it up. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm looking at all of the breakdowns of the albums. I'm looking at the way that this brother presents and packages his art. He's far from non-conscious. He's super conscious, right? He's super conscious. He's able to, 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 to straddle the fence in a way in which I have never seen before. He might be the most conscious artist that I have seen in the last 15 or 20 years. Because he's successful in mainstream, he's not undermined his integrity, you know what I'm saying? And he's able to address a broad spectrum of fan base without 
openly packaging it as consciousness. That's the most effective consciousness when you don't come with the goddamn um, crochet stitching and all of that shit, right? That's the most effective consciousness. Yes, he rides the finest line that I have ever seen. So now it's not the peace, love, and light consciousness, right? It's consciousness for the dark. It's consciousness for war. It's the wartime consciousness. It's consciousness that you're going to need to implore going forward in these four years where your identity, your manhood, right? Everything is coming into question and you're going to have to stand in a particular way that separates you from the pack of black, which is a damaged brand that is in desperate need of rebranding. But before that happens, you have to what? Remove some of the gatekeepers out of the way. Right. Because these people have been sitting and harnessing over the brand of blackness and extracting from it all of the essence to the degree where Diddy is able to package and present himself as black excellence. No disrespect to the diddler, to the diddler. You know what I'm saying? But it's not going to go over too well right now. If that's the face of black excellence, you, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Um, so I had put a post up earlier and it was controversial. You know what I'm saying? It got a lot of people upset. It was in their feelings. And understandably so. You know what I mean? And unbeknownst to most, right? I do not wake up choosing violence, wanting to disrupt. You know what I'm saying? Because in order to do that means that I distinctively want to separate people. And I don't want to separate people. I would like to bring people together. But sometimes our perspectives are, um, they're, they're jolting. Right? The perspectives are jolting. So the aim is not to divide and to separate. But not everyone is going to agree. Right? Especially if they feel that you're coming for either their generation or their generational icons, right? Of which these three individuals represent. They're the generational icons of what comes after Gen X. Are these like millennials? No, it's something after millennials, right? It's a generation alpha. I don't think that these are generation alpha artists, right? Whatever that generation is, and you guys will let me know in the chat. Right, the generation that most of y'all belong to. I was born in '75. I'm from the golden era. I think that that's. I think that, I think I belong to Generation X. Ray, can you help me out? Generation Z. Hmm. Okay. So you know, we. Okay, millennials came after Generation X. I think, right. And let me say it, um, I was in the music industry in 07, 07 and 08, when we was working with Nipsey up at Epic, right? Shout out to the team. Um, I, I first came across Drake's music in 07, right? So this is before So Far Gone. This is before the official mixtape comes out. He was a backpack rapper. When I had the mixtape, but I thought that he was exceptionally well. Now, I didn't know nothing about Degrassi. I didn't know who Aubrey Graham was. I didn't know none of that stuff. I just heard the music, right? Um, my the, the, the mother of my brother's oldest child, Amir, she gave me the album, right? And I think she was at Sony at the time. She, you know, we was all... We was we was in the industry. We was moving through the industry. She was in the industry and she had got the tape and she passed it to me and I listened to it and I was like, damn, son is nice. You know what I'm saying? I was like, son is nice. Son sounds like a, a, a backpacker that's not a backpacker. You feel me? And then, you know, he he got put on later on in the game, like oh nine with the So Far Gone mixtape, and then things started happening, you know what I mean? Of which, 
Yeah, he was rhyming like little brother, right? Yeah, but he was definitely rhyming like little brother. And he speaks about that. He speaks about how he was inspired by little brother. But he was rhyming like little brother. And I felt I felt that mixtape. I felt what he was, you know what I'm saying? And then the So Far Gone came out. And I was like, okay, buddy might do some things. Um, then I remember, I remember seeing them, right? I remember seeing it was him, Kanye, and Amber Rose, right? I ran into them in a the VIP section of a club. So this was around the time that Kanye was around him and he was about to direct the video for So Far Gone and everything, right? And if y'all remember, I had interviewed Ye in 02. So every time I seen Ye, you know what I mean? Ye would shout me out and we would have a, a, a brief conversation. You know what I mean? Um, so we dialogued briefly. I think I even took a picture with them. You know what I'm saying? And then I kept it moving. Long story short, you know, I observed this this young man's career as he came through. And, um, you know, I had to do an all-out lecture in 2010 right here in Atlanta, right, in June. And before we did that lecture, we 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 were extreme with this shit. We went to Serpent Mound and did a ritual because I understood, based on my observation of what was taking place, that this was a ancient mythos playing out about the Draco constellation, right, and Ursa Minor, which is the little bear. So... I ain't going off the deep end and the shit might sound far fetched to people that are not into nothing that we do or our cosmology and things of that nature. But there's something called a procession of the equinox and the procession of the equinox deals with constellations, replacing other constellations and those constellations that precede one. Right. Replace was called our pole star or what we call the North Star. In our lifetime that would be polaris right that's the north star that uh what you call it used to navigate harriet tubman and them that's the north star that many of our ancestors were utilized to navigate so i ain't gonna get too deep into this right but i knew that draco or drake was the scorpion or the serpent he was he was draco because he was scorpion so i'm like okay so this is draco and then I know that Little Bear was Ursa Minor that represented Kanye, right? So when they were still cool and they was friends, I was telling everybody who would listen, I'd be like, yo, they're, they're going to fall out in the future. And it's going to be big. It's going to be catastrophic for the industry. It's going to be something that pretty much sets the template of the industry. And they're going to go at one another. You know what I'm saying? And we went to Serpent Mound and consecrated a ceremonial ritual because I'm like, yo, as a Scorpio, I'm like, this dude is about to come for the women in the culture. And they're going to be rocked to sleep. You know what I'm saying? they just going to, oh, my God, this, this nigga's talking poetry. And lo and behold, right, <laughs> that's what took place. So we kind of put the word out in 010 about what was, this is, the, the album didn't even drop yet. And then I was up there telling people what was finna happen with the career. And, you know, I, I did not miss, you know what I'm saying? Even to the point that I was pointing out that I'm like, he's a hybrid, you know what I'm saying? And not just on the ethnic front. I remember when the source put him on the, I think it was either the vibe or the source. They put him on the cover of their magazine and they called, they said the new religion was the title. And he had, you know, I think he had the, the olive, the Hebrew olive chain on, right? May have been that. Right. And they said that they said the title was the new religion. And I'm like, <laughs> look at this shit. He ain't even drop an album and here they are giving him the crown, christening him. There's obviously a plan put in place. Yes, he's obviously a plant. Right. And Avatar was out at the time with Sam Worthington. And then he had Sam Worthington was in Avatar and Terminator Salvation at the time. And both of those, he played a hybrid, right? And 
when I have put these pictures of Drake and Sam Worthington side by side, they look like the same person. But then Drake went and did the Sprite commercial where he presented himself as a hybrid. It was the same as Terminator Salvation when Sam Worthington was the hybrid. Remember, he was the T2. He was the Terminator that had the flesh on him. And then in Avatar, he was the hybrid as well because he was able to go in his dream state and pop up, right? In their world, like he was one of them. So I'm like, damn, homie is moving through the game like he's one of us and he's not. He's a hybrid, right? Oh, and then Sam Worthington and Avatar was in the wheelchair like Jimmy Brooks. So I'm like, yo, this is... <laughs> Look. Don't take shots at me for how I do my decoding. My shit is unorthodox, but I don't miss. But I don't miss, right? But I don't miss. So these are the things that have prompted us early in the game to make our observations, right? Now, as he, you know, got with... Lil Wayne and Young Money. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say I was never a fan. No, I, I will say that I was never, like, I was never into fandom necessarily. You feel me? But I, I listened to Wayne's music. I remember I met Wayne. I met Wayne in the studio. You know, um, this is before, like, his run, this is probably with Fireman and all of that. This was way back in the days, right? Shout out to Jackie Rowe. When she used to, when Baby came to town, Jackie used to always go and hang out with Baby. And I was with her one night and we went to the studio. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, homie was a cool little kid. This is before he snapped and, and did Carter 3 and got in his bag and everything. This is before he came to New York and got the cosign from Dipset and picked up the red flag. This was before that. Right, this is when he was still trying to find his way, and Juvenile was still the hottest artist on that label. Now, I could even tell you about. Look, I was there at the album listening, right? Just to give y'all some insight, some back insight into what happened, what could possibly have happened with your man Jigger. The reason why he never forgave these dudes, right? This was the day that. Jigga stabbed Un, right? Before he went to Kit Kat Club for the Q-Tip album release party, they did an album listening party for his album, right? And for his album listening party, right? That was the, that was the album that had the song Snoopy on it. And Juvenile was on Snoopy. So Cash Money came. Now, Jackie took cash money to Jacob before they showed up to this event and they spent like three million on J in Jacob. And if y'all y'all can look this up, there was a lawsuit where cash money sued Jacob the jeweler because one of their rings was fake. Right. One of their rings turned colors. This was when they went and got the cash of jewelry of jewelry from Jacob. So they didn't have the little cash money change no more. This is the first time they popped out and they had real jewelry or real diamonds. I guess Jay-Z was taking it light that night. He had a little platinum chain on. And simply because he got outshined at his own album listening party, because these niggas came with the jewels on. I mean, son had the bangles and shit. Everybody had, they was heavy. The whole clique, right? They had got that Windy Day money and they bust the bag. They spent the bag and they came dripped out. I'm telling y'all, he was so thrown off by being upstaged at his own event. Later on that night, he ends up stabbing on at Kit Kat. Now, I'm on the dance floor interviewing Ice-T. Shout out again to Jackie because Jackie was there, right? She was holding the camera. I was doing the interview. We caught the whole scene on camera, right? Everything that is disputed about what happened versus what didn't happen, right? I caught the whole shit because I was doing the interview. 
with Ice-T. And let's say Ice-T was standing here and everything that was going on was behind us. You know what I'm saying? That's a that's that's a long story that gets even longer. You know what I'm saying? Jackie negotiated and, and got the footage to James. You know, Jigga and them, they, they came and got that footage from her. Right? I hope I'm not telling too much of your business, Jackie. But and shout out to Jackie. Jackie was in the Shine documentary, um, Holding Down Shine. Whole nother story. We'll get back to that. Yeah, Wendy Day. She went and got cash money, $30 million dollars. Um, for their distribution. Might have been from Universal. Why I'm telling? I'm just saying. I've told the story before. And it's, it's old news to me. And it, it you know, and it actually happened. So it is, it is what it is. Right? <clears throat> but nonetheless. Um, so Jay got upstaged by cash money. And he never forgave them for that. And that's why he's still being petty to this day and kicking them while they down, right? Um, so, you know, later on in his career, Wayne had the audacity to think that he could challenge Jay, just like Drake did, just like Joe Buttons did, just like majority of the people in the industry did. And he's never forgiven nobody that initially tried him. You know what I'm saying? So cash money still paying for that, Right. And I think that that's what Nikki popped out and made comments of when she was crashing out earlier in the year, speaking about Jay holding a vendetta against Baby and taking it out on Lil Wayne. And it was because of that. As simple as that. At least that's where it started. I seen that. I seen how it threw him so much that he ended up crashing out and catching the charge. <laughs> you know, super petty. Um, but. These three individuals, you know, when they got in the game and when Wayne picked up that flag and he was false flagging so hard, you know, that I was just like, are you serious? You feel me? How do you think you're going to pull this off? And it becomes an extension of the false flagging that he adopted when he came to New York. And Jim Jones and it was false flagging and it becomes culture from him. Right, he's running with Jules Santana and J.R. Ryder and all of these dudes, and they playing these games. And these games became very real because you left out the um, bootleg volume three. Again, like I said, we was there at the album listening for that. Um, I think I believe it was volume three. Y'all could Google it, whatever album that was that had the song Snoopy on it that had Juvenile it might have been volume 3 yeah shout out to True Life I was there for that whole episode as well I got video and tape of that matter of fact where my True Life shit at yeah True Life wasn't there for none of that right <laughs> True Life wasn't there for none of that he was shutting all of that down. Yeah, I say he was false flagging. What part didn't you hear? Homie was false flagging. And the false flagging became adopted. You know what I'm saying? And some made it a cultural thing. You know, he spread false flagging to the to the to the ends of the universe. When Wayne picked the flag up because he left New York, he borrowed the flow and then, yeah, Carter three. He was on fire after that. He found the whole new flow and we was like, who's this? Right. And he never looked back. He did that video on top of the Carter in, in Harlem where they filmed New Jack City and he never looked back. Right. The album that he dropped was impressive. And I was just like, OK. Little homie bringing it. He's stepping up to the plate. He got no choice. He's the only one left. I see it. And then he was scorching. You know what I'm saying? But when he picked up these different elements of these different characters on his team. And I, 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 I really don't want to say nothing crazy, crazy. Because it's like just understanding the culture. You Okay, there we go. Yeah. I don't know why my picture fuzzy, but 
that's me interviewing true life that's the homie right there i don't know why this picture look crazy but anyway i'll put it up at another time you know what i'm saying they yeah man they uh Yeah, he borrowed Jewel's flow, and they did the can't feel my face thing, but he eclipsed them. Um, I, I, I'm starting to, you know, him, I would say his proximity to Gilly. I don't know if Gilly was writing for him per se, but he was picking up elements, you know, and, and Wayne was nice. You know what I'm saying? Wayne was nice before he switched his style up. You know what I'm saying? He was nice in his own respect. You know, I remember them always like, yeah, he's the nicest one out the click. And I'm like, out of Hot Boys. And I, I didn't feel like that was the truth back then. You know what I'm saying? I didn't feel like that was the truth back then. But he he grew into himself. You know what I'm saying? And, and then he really stepped to the plate. And whatever he did to accelerate himself as a lyricist, he got into his bag. Right? He got into his bag. He he adopted the, the, the jigger format of not writing. You feel me? And started putting stuff together in his head. Right? And and son took off. Shout out. Peace God. Right? Son, he took off and, and he cannot be denied that. His law his raw lyricism. But, you know, he was he was testing the throne a little too early. He thought he could throw stones at jay and all of that and i just thought that all of that stuff that he was doing getting gassed up by baby i felt that that was real premature and it stifled him because jay still had a heavy hand in the industry and jay wasn't rocking with dipset so he wasn't gonna turn the lights on for lil wayne and co-sign him and give him the look that he was looking for when he was just gonna ultimately turn around and stab him in the back drake did the same thing so I don't want to sit up here and and get into too much of this hip hop gossip stuff. You feel me? Um, I'm just giving y'all a little backdrop, a little history. You know what I'm saying? And collectively, Corey Guns definitely took Wayne, you know, influence. But Wayne was already he was already in his bag. So I think the Corey Guns may have, you know influence him to, 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 to stay on top of his A-game, but I don't think that that's where he got the flow from. You know what I'm saying? That was that was shit. He got one, he got him one head of a pill or something like that. That was the Adderall. I don't know what it was, but the Adderall mixed with the lean. You know what I'm saying? But this whole label came apart, and it was felonious. You know what I'm saying? Because it was just, it was, you know, it was pretty packaging, but there was really nothing there. And once their, their CEO fell, right, once he got his head chopped off, you feel me? Then the rest of them, they just started diminishing. And I think they were looking at the eventual, right, which was just deemed to happen at some point, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at the inevitable <clears throat> crash of that generation's icons, the same way that my generation is looking at the ultimate crash of our icons. And then the generation underneath them is looking at the crash of their icons. All of the icons is crashing out. Right? This thing has to be erased and diminished. So I feel the way that the universe works and conspires for our overall success, I do think that in the long run, this um, lawsuit may ultimately end up being, you know, the the ultimate one of the the. I don't want to say the final blow in the industry. I think that it may potentially, if it goes the distance, right, it can expose some things about the industry that have been argued for quite some time in terms of payola, in terms of you know, the bots and what have you. It's going to put things in perspective and it's going to put a spotlight on certain things that industry is not going to be able to move in the same way. But who does the industry have to replace? Who are their marquee legacy artists that are left 
how are they going to do business in 2025? They got to have to come up with an entirely new business model. This is going to expose a lot of their business model, right? But who are they going to, who's going to replace a Drake? And I'm saying in terms of him being the stimulus package, the person that was able to drive industry for them, right? Get butts in the seat, get people in the clubs. That's, 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 that's about finished. Right. And yeah, so this is this is a Nino Brown move. Right. When Nino Brown said, I'm taking everybody with me, I'm not going alone. This is bigger than Nino Brown. I'm making an observation and I'm seeing right for the most part, what we're looking at is something like this. He's not willing to go alone. Right. He cannot accept the L. Right. To a degree that it's a career ending L. It's not just an L that you can take and say, all right, I'm going to move on and make new material and let my material speak for me. No, it's a disruptive L. His whole character has been exposed. You know what I'm saying? And it's been diminished. It's not the record labels that have diminished the character. It's the accusations that have been, you know, unspoken for that have diminished the character. You feel me? It's the fact that he got hit by the Black Christos mythos. That has diminished the character. And he found himself in the inevitable role of the Scorpio in the mythos. And the Scorpio in the mythos has to play Hades. Right? The Scorpio in the mythos is Shaitan himself. So who's going to play the bad guy but the Scorpio? Right? Who gets their neck cut but the serpent? Right. And he's the big serpent. He's Draco. He's the draconian serpent. He's not just a regular serpent. He's the serpent of serpents. So. We're looking at, once again, the shakeup of what's called the dominant nigga hierarchy. Right. Who sits at the top of the dominant nigga hierarchy? You had two Scorpios. You had one in our generation being puffed. And you had the artistry of Drake sitting on top of the dominant nigga hierarchy of this generation right and both of those particular scorpios just have got toppled so what what is the shakeup going to look like what is the what is the repurposing of industry going to look like this is going to be a damning blow once they start revealing the secrets of how the industry actually works behind the scenes once they pull the curtain back and they show you that this is what the wizard has been doing you feel me If Wake, if Wayne don't have Drake money, why go after another? And after another worker, I don't understand what that. I don't understand what you're saying. Oh, somebody said they wanted to see Wayne and Kendra go at it. Um, I think yeah. You know, we spoke on this yesterday. You know what I'm saying? And I feel that. Yeah, I, yeah, we already spoke on that. I won't revisit that topic. I don't think that that's inevitable. It would be interesting, right? It would be interesting for him if he really wants to clean the swamp, if he if he really wants to get a level of redress back, if he really wants to erase the legacy of this dude that he is battling, because homies just fight different. You know what I'm saying? This is this confrontational consciousness that we're speaking about. And we haven't seen nobody that's really about their war. Just like, yo, I want to wipe the whole down line out. Like, you you dudes have stepped over the line to some to, to He's equalizer. He's equalizer. You feel me? So, yeah, Lil Wayne's gangster illusion is being destroyed online right now by Ali Zoe who was dragging him in every interview that he could get in front of and explaining how they got ran out of Miami by the Zoe Pound and how he got relieved of his jewels. You know what I'm saying? So, again, what, what, what version of this dude will we possibly get for um, lyrical confrontation? You know what I'm saying? Because I'm sure he could string some balls together, but what platform, what leg does he have left to stand on? You know what I'm saying? His, his daddy don't rock with him like that no more. I mean, we, we've just seen too much. 
And I think that yeah, it would it would it would suffice us if we was to 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 get a lot of these distractions out of the way. Right? Yeah, after Young Thug, you know, lined him up in Atlanta, he's never been the same after that. Once he realized that, you know, and this is a damning blow, you feel me? Once you realize, just like how he felt in the Ali Zoe situation, he don't have his backup no more. You know what I'm saying? His cover has been removed. So the fake blood stuff goes out the window. When Baby walks away, he takes all of that illusion with him. So what is homie standing on? Uh, uh, the, the the skateboard thing, thing? And like, who are you going to roll up with? The niggas on the skateboard? Allegedly, right? So, yeah, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're looking at confrontational consciousness, and I think that as observers, as fans, as people who are moving into a paradigm where we understand that there has to be a, a multiplicity of draining of swamps, right, for lack of a better term, just that concept, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, we're going to have to see this next year, right? This confrontational consciousness, right? Where there's elements of the culture that have to be confronted. Everybody can't make it. You know what I'm saying? There has to be a demarcation. They not like us. Who's they? You feel me? That's a short bus that still has to get filled up because... Yeah, they can't, wherever we're going, they can't come with us. Right? So there has to be confrontational consciousness for people who have compromised themselves in ways in which they can't come back from. And when I look at this subset of individuals, all three of them, to some degree, have compromised themselves. Right? And it's very hard for them to come back from the level of compromising that they have made. Now, you know, I'm, I, I like Nicki Minaj. You know what I'm saying? Um, I met her a few times. Uh, 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 from what I can tell, you know. Would you say Chuck D was on a confrontational consciousness? Uh, early in the game, yes. Yes, early in the game. Early in the game, Chuck D was dealing with confrontational consciousness until... He voted on Liar Cohen over um, Professor Griff. The man kicked me out of his... Now he didn't kick me out of his house, but he stopped the interview between me and him when I, I mentioned, I said, Liar Cohen. And he, that's, that's, that changed the whole tone of our convo. Chuck D, he was like, this is Liar Cohen. What are you talking about? I was like, the, you know, slip of the tongue, my nigga. Liar Cohen. <laughs> and... It was it was the wrong day. It was the day that we buried um, Jam Master J, and Chuck invited me back to the crib in Long Island to do an interview when I was working in Four Corners. So it was bad timing and it was of bad taste. And I do, if brother, if you're listening to this, I apologize, but I'm you know liar Cohen, yeah. Um, the the BBLs, the body augmentation, right? And, and sh yes, that's exactly what's taking, yeah, Chuck is a Def Jam baby, right? And he, he, um, these guys, liar calling to them is God, you feel me? And I have to understand that that relationship is something that he's not, he was not willing to forego, let go of, or besmirch for laughter. I could not even play with his name around him. And that's, you know, that's what's up. I, more power, you know, hold it down. The BBLs, the body augmentation, right? And it's not fair just to highlight and blame her. 